تحت رعاية الفريق أول معالي الشيخ راشد بن عبد الله آل خليفة وزير الداخلية قامت جمعية الصداقة البحرينية البريطانية احتفالا بحضور معالي الشيخ فواز بن محمد آل خليفة سفير مملكة البحرين لدى المملكة المتحدة بالإضافة إلى مجموعة من المسؤولين والمفكرين وممثلي المؤسسات الفكرية والبحثية ودوائر صنع القرار في المملكة المتحدة وفي مستهل الاحتفال ألقى السيد بيتر سينكوك رئيس الجمعية كلمة ترحيبية عبر فيها عن شكره وتقديره لمعالي الوزير واعتزاز الجمعية بحضور معاليه ولقائه أعضاءها مشيدا في الوقت ذاته بالعلاقات التاريخية المتميزة التي تجمع مملكة البحرين والمملكة المتحدة معربا عن أمله في فتح مزيد من آفاق التعاون البناء بين البلدين الصديقين I always welcome the chance to speak to the Bahrain society because it is such a pleasure to talk to friends who know Bahrain so well, who care for our country, who recognize what we have achieved and what we are facing, and who are standing up for the Kingdom of Bahrain and for our partnership with the United Kingdom. Since my last visit, it's fair to say that quite a lot has changed in Bahrain and the wider region. And I want to give you a brief overview of both these developments and the emerging challenges we still confront. I think it is appropriate that I should bring up my hat-trick of remarks to the society in the year when we begin celebrating the centenary of the establishment of Bahrain's police in 1919. I know that some of you here tonight are among those who have given such valuable service to the development of our police over the course of many years. We deeply appreciate your support and we know that you have stood by us in both good times and bad. Indeed, I think it's fair to say that the British expertise, experience, and effort has been a foundation of the modern, responsive, and community-focused police service that we are proud to have in Bahrain today. Ladies and gentlemen, I am confident to say that our crime rate is back to normal, as it was in 2008 and 2009. And we will need to remain vigilant to new and emerging threats from technology, such as cybercrime and the use of drones to conduct strikes. Just as we are alert to and prepared for well-known challenges such as ballistic missile threats. We have seen the true nature of these threats with the recent attacks on Saudi Aramco facilities. And we are in Bahrain greatly appreciate the United Kingdom that stands with us in condemning these outrageous acts. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that one of the most urgent threats to national security is from those who seek to divide us against each other, who want us to see ourselves not as citizens of our nation, but in terms of our sect, our religion, our ethnicity. But it is in the face of this ideology threat. I have become convinced of the need to reassert our Bahraini identity, to remember what binds us together as citizens loyal to our country and to each other, and to reaffirm that the most enduring forms of security 
and prosperity of those based on cooperation, community, and mutual respect. Based on this conviction, I have begun a new initiative with the title of the National Plan to Promote a Sense of National Belonging, which I prefer to call it by its shorter name, simply Our Bahrain. This initiative aims to reinforce a sense of nationality, placing our shared Bahraini identity at our core rather than being divided by religion or sect. It takes in over 90 different programs from fields including education, media, youth, sport, and culture. And it puts into practice the aspiration of His Majesty the King for people to see themselves first and foremost as Bahrainis. I am convinced that initiatives like this are our best defense against sectarianism and division, particularly given the regional situation we face in the long term, they will form an integral part of what we can call our national security policy in its widest sense. Alongside measures such as Bahrain's new alternative sentencing law, which, for example, allows for non-custodial sentences such as community service, training, or addiction treatment. Taking together such developments show how we have moved decisively beyond immediate stabilization and security issues and how we are putting in place the best possible framework to address future challenges through focusing on our people, our community, and our shared identity. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I hope my remarks tonight have given you at least an overview, an update of where we have been and where we are aiming to go. Allow me to conclude on a note of optimism, if I may. Bahrain and the United Kingdom have been through much over their two centuries of friendship and partnership, many ups and few downs. But I am in no doubt that with the support and advocacy of our friends such as you in the Bahrain society, our countries have even a brighter future ahead based on our shared values and interests and on the unbreakable personal ties which stand out so clearly here tonight. Thank you very much and enjoy your day.